dumb as you thought. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we the illest on court. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, reporting live from the cam. High in demand, so please stand by if you can. What we got is worth a lot, so put a tie on your plans. On court, talking sports through the eyes of the fans. With Trip Young, Emma Marie, Eric Sanchez. You heard what I said, we elite. Check the latest topics and stay ahead of the beat. Keep us in your topics and uh -huh. we ahead of the Yo. streets. It's Johnny Floss, bringing a different type of blend. Backing up Misfit to make sure y'all tuned in. You gotta watch, this show is one of a kind. Updates on your TV screen from 8 to 9. For the older folks, so even if you're younger, no matter what sport, this show, we got it covered. It's filmed live in the middle of BK, so ain't no better sports show to watch on Thursdays. Real Yo. fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought What's going on, it's Trip Young We are back with another Quarantine TV edition of Real Fans Real Talk They still got us locked out of the TV station But as they say, we will make a way out of no way So we are in the studio right now and I have a very special guest with me, uh, Kathy Nunez. Hi, thank she, you. She is an actress, uh, former radio personality, philanthropist. Um, okay. Does a little bit of modeling up yes. in there as as well. It's how I started, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, and I think, and I, and I, I got to touch on the philanthropy a little bit just because I, I appreciate so much when people don't find a robbery to give their time uh, to charitable organizations. Uh, we actually met at one of our favorite charities that, that we are a part of, uh, Balling for Peace. Yes. Uh, big shout out to Haran H2O Hargrave. Yes. Uh, Balling for Peace softball in the Bronx right here, not too far from That's here. That's right. Think about it, we got about 10 minute drive to get to Yankee Stadium from here. Um, so listen, just introduce yourself to the Real Fans Real Talk family. What's up, everybody? I am Catherine Nunez. I am so happy to be here with you all. Thank you for having me. I am an actress, I'm a model, I'm a philanthropist. I can't even say the word, but the, I am that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I am. And I'm a mother of two boys. Um, I, I'm an entrepreneur. I, I, I think I, I juggle so many different hats, and sometimes I have to pat myself in the back. Because when you were like introducing me, I got kind of shy, because I'm like, oh my God, am I all those things? Yes, I am. Um, but yeah, so I've been doing this for about uh, 10 years. Mm. I've been in the game. I started um, when I was 26 years old, and I am, you know, I don't want to put my age out there, but you know what? I'm going to do it because I look good. And you know what? <laughs> Everyone tells me, don't put your age out there because you are still you still look great. But I think, you know, it's important for us women to love ourselves no matter what age you are. I'm 36 years old. I have two kids, and I look great. Um, so yeah, that's well, it. You know what I, I was going to just say though, for the, for the math majors, you kind of already, already gave it away. I don't know everybody out there. They might not be able to add too well. Oh yeah. Cause I said 10 years 20, in the game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, but it's, listen, it's all good. You look good. Um, you know, either way. Um, you know, I'm, I'm up there, I'm up there with you. So it's all, it's all okay. good. Oh, he right? said up there. Uh, I, I'm going to stop saying my age. Can we delete this and make <laughs> this, uh, we're going to go back. Okay. I'm 26. I had my kid when she's, I was 16. She's just, <laughs> she's just 26 and counting. After 26, we don't even add the years in. The thing is, I have an old soul but a young spirit. So, like, yeah, I'm an, I'm an 80s baby. I, I grew up in the 90s. So, like, I love that era. Like, I wouldn't want to be from any other era, honestly. Oh, no, that's a fact, man. I was actually, I was watching the uh, Mary J. Blige uh, documentary the other day on uh, Amazon Prime. And um, I was just I had to think to myself. I was like, you know what? This is still the only woman that I've ever took a beating for in my life was Mary J. Blige. It was when I was a kid. I was you about took to, a beating for Mary J. Blige. I did. It was from my mom. Oh, I got a confession. And this is hold on. Just before they changed the law, they said you know now I'm tell, now uh, yeah, it might I'm be child listen. abuse. But I had to take I took a beating for Mary. She had did the um. Oh, what was the video she did on my on my grandmother's block? Actually, my grandmother was right here. She did the video on her block. Me and my brother. My brother was about was about twelve. I was about about ten, nine, ten years old. And since it was on my grandmother's block, we was actually right in the mix of the music video. Was it reminisce over you, Mom? No, it wasn't reminisce. It was. Oh my goodness! And I just <laughs> like I literally just had it not too long ago. 
But um, there were so many people on the block that when my mom came out looking for us, she couldn't find us. She was asking all our friends. But we're literally, like, right in the house right next to where Mary's doing the music video. And it's going to come to me at some point during the show. Um, so she leaves. She, now she's pissed off. She goes. And um, we don't get back until maybe, like, 12, 31 o'clock. So, it, yeah, it got, it, got, it got ugly. You know, so my brother hey. actually got it worse than me. But, um, he was older than you, right? He was older than me, and... He was responsible for you. You shouldn't have been there. Yes. You had your little brother there. It's your fault. Exactly. And you probably got the lesser of the... Well, I think, because me, I'm very strategic when I, you know, when I would get in trouble. So, and I... I'm, I'm giving y'all a lot of myself right now. <laughs> <laughs> people at home. I tend to do that to people. I, yes. like, they, they bring themselves out. Go, keep so, going. So, <laughs> while my brother was getting his beat, because we only, you know, we had to go one at a time, right? So... My mother used to have this thing she would call assume the position. Assume the position? Yes. So you'd have to lay down flat on the couch or the bed, and then she was just going, you know, she was going to go to town That's on it. you. So while my brother was getting his his beer, I'm in the bathroom, and it's a whole brand new roll of toilet tissue on the, on the roll. So I start getting that toilet tissue off the roll, and now my mom had company, so I'm like, all right, she ain't going to make me pull my pants down because she got company right now. So I stuff a whole roll of toilet tissue in in my in the back of my underwears, uh, so I could cushion the so I could cushion the blows. That's smart, right? So then I get you know so so now my brother is done. He crying. He off somewhere in the corner. She called me up. So she she swing the first time, and she noticed I don't move. I don't feel nothing. Nothing is going on. So now she gets you know sometimes parents they get mad when they don't. Get the reaction they want right. out of you. So she was like, nah, pull your pants down. So I'm like, oh, this is some bulls. Because now I gotta figure out a way to pull my pants down and not show and that not I don't show the, the toilet whole paper. Roll and you know when you when you when you grow up in the struggle, that roll of toilet paper, that's a whole roll of toilet paper. Right. You getting beat for the for lying, for <laughs> yes. doing the for, for wasting the toilet paper. Absolutely. All of that stuff. So that was like I had a I had a theft charge on my on my record on top of the breaking curfew charge. Listen, I know all about those ass beatings. <laughs> my mom still till this day with my ass if she has to, and I'm thirty. <laughs> <laughs> See? So you I don't I don't do nothing in front of my mom that I think she's gonna be like, What are you doing? Yes, I don't, I don't, I, I don't curse in front of my mom. I don't do none of that. Like I try to keep it the most respectful, just because I don't want to have a flashback of a situation from when I was younger. PTSD is real, y'all. And yeah, it, it's, it's real. Like I used to get my ass whooped too. Me and my brother, we used to get belts. Like I, okay, what I used to do was I used to like if I knew I was gonna get my ass beat, cause you know whatever I got caught doing some dumb. And I, my mom is like was a belt person. That was her thing. So I would just hide under the blanket and let her go ham. Like I just be like, go ham. But I'm under this blanket though, and you, I'm not feeling. I like I felt it, but it didn't feel like. And crazy thing is that now I kind of like being whooped. It's weird. Like I know it's so sick, but it's the truth. Like I, don't whip your kids, y'all. Stop doing that. Okay. I, I mean, it's a Spanish thing, and and uh, okay, like yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, I don't know if we do. We need to delve into <laughs> why you'd like to still get. Is that like a kinky type of thing or no? It's like it doesn't bother me. Like just like a little during <laughs> yeah with my whoever I'm. T- yeah. Okay, this is getting too far. Let me stop here. I'm just saying, my mom used to whip my ass, and I used to fucking figure out a way to hide it. Like you know. Listen, you know what? I'm not mad at you on that. We let's we got some things we gotta talk about. Right. We we'll talk about all that stuff later. We here to talk okay. about my movies. We here to talk. Yes. About- so let I'm just crazy, y'all. Don't mind me. I'm let's crazy. uh let's start with uh with pocket full of game. Uh, oh my god, two. yes. Yes. Okay, talk to me about that. Talk to me about how you got involved, your character, production. Give me all of the all of the details. I got you. So basically, okay, so I I was the lead in Pocket Full of Game Part One. Mm-hmm. So that project, it's an urban action film. I play a girl named Portia. She's a street girl raised in East Harlem. You know, um, she 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 was in the streets and she fell in love with someone who was also doing the same thing she was doing. And they started doing it together. And then, you know, she wanted to get out the mix and she she finds a way to, to get out the industry. But she kind of was forced. And I say industry because I don't know what else to call it. It's like the the drug yeah. gang or whatever. <laughs> I'm not from the street. So playing this character was really fun for me because I got to like tap into something that I'm not, you know, that I don't 
Yeah. I don't know nothing about. I don't know anything about selling um, drugs or anything like that. So this this is a character who's really in the streets, and she's about it. She's not like she doesn't play any games. So you guys got to watch it. Um, she gets caught in, in a lot of stuff, and she's okay. So I'll say this about Portia. Portia, she she is a street girl. She knows how to make money, but she doesn't want to hurt anyone. She doesn't want to mm. kill anyone or, or hurt anyone. And I think that she gets caught up in something and it gets it it put it makes her realize that this is not where she wants to be in life. And she finds a way to get out. Now she comes to her peers and she's like, hey, if you guys want to get out, get out. They didn't want to. So now they turned their back on her and she is, you know, caught in a mess. But you guys got to watch part one because part two is coming out in the fall. And now I'm a whole different person. This is 16 years later. Okay. Pocket full of game is, is Portia 16 years later. She's out the game. She has a baby now. I mean, I don't want to give too much away, but um, it's it's a really fun and, and action-filled movie. So make sure you guys watch it. Um, I'm also in a couple of other projects um, that are coming out this fall, but... I'm I'm just starting my acting journey. I started modeling first. That's how I got mm -hmm. into the industry. I start. I might. I used to call myself Kathy Red. <laughs> I was a little bit spicy. I had red hair and everything. And then um, I I loved it. I loved. I knew I loved um being in front of the camera, but I didn't necessarily like love mod. Like I love taking pictures, but I don't like the modeling industry per se. So okay. I chose to like you know, just elevate myself in a way where I was like, okay, what do I really want to do? I still want to be in the arts. I love acting. I love getting into different characters. Kathy Red was a character in herself. That's not who I am, guys. You see those pictures out there. It's not me. <laughs> now I got I got to pull one up now to throw it in the interview. So when the people when they watch this at home, they got to see. You Kathy have Red. to. Oh my god, <laughs> Kathy Red was a, a firecracker. Exactly that. Like I was, I did a lot of music videos. I worked with a lot of um, different celebrities like Ludacris, French Montana, Future. Okay. Um, Troy. I mean, I worked with a lot of people. I did a lot of like. Just stuff to get in the mix. And I thought that was, like, fun for a while, and it was. But then it was just like, okay, you you start to realize it's like there's new girls coming in all the time. So you're like, yeah, yeah let me get out of here. Because I'm getting older and, and hotter and more wiser. And, and I why, like the finer things in age, life. Right, right. No, that's what they say? Yes, and we like the finer things in life. So we don't tolerate certain shit. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Now, t okay, talk to me because I see um, you, you were also in a project that uh, one of my friends is in. Which one? Uh, Foster Sin. Yes, I love Foster um, Sin. Shout out to my guy, Kenny Dark. Yes. Um, yeah, that's, the, that's the bro right there. Okay. Um, so talk to me about that role. So I play um, a girl named Sonia. She's a mother who isn't really, like, worried about her kid. Um, it, it was a small role, but it was definitely like a very meaningful role because it showed basically how some moms who are single can be so worried about whoever they're dating and don't even think about their kid mm -hmm. and like what their kid needs. And the whole time, you know, their kid is in danger. Yes. You know what I mean? And, and you're not you're so like blinded by being finding a new man mm -hmm. to take place of whoever the fuck. So it's a very interesting character. And I liked to play that character because it, it made me really like appreciate who I am as a mother. Like I never chose a man first. I always chose my kids first, you know, so I'm, I'm happy to hear you. Hear yeah. You say that so I play a lot of women that choose men. Yeah. Like <laughs> I. Listen, let me so. say something to the single moms. Balance. Balance. Ba you can date. Okay. Have fun. You can date. There's nothing wrong with dating. But don't ever bring a guy home. Like, your home is your home for your kids, and that's your sanctuary, and that's where you, like, you know, you keep your, your dating life kind of separate from your uh, family life, and can't no shit happen. Can't nobody do nothing wrong. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry. Can I curse? I mean, we are on television, so I'm going to mute those uh, out. But don't worry. It's all good. It's all good. Don't I'm worry about it. If they, if they move us to the BET after dark hours, I'll let you know. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. Okay, <laughs> no, I'll no, no, stop. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's all good. Trust Listen, me. I'm a Jersey girl. We've had we've we've had several rappers on the show. And, okay. You know, rappers. I'm not a know, rapper, but. Yeah, but, you know, rappers don't necessarily, you know, 
speak without using uh, subjective okay, language. Okay, great. So I'm up there. I'm with you. I'm with <laughs> so, y'all. I'm there with the rappers and the, so you know. <laughs> what part of wait? What part of Jersey are you from? I grew up in Weehawken, New Jersey. Okay, Weehawken, New Jersey. It's right. Oh, it's what connects New York to New Jersey. It, if it's either Weehawken or Fort Lee, so you're either taking okay. the bridge or you're taking the Lincoln Tunnel. I'm by the Lincoln Tunnel. My town. So you're closest to South. I mean, even though I'm it's still north. pretty high up, but uh, as far as because the GWB is right here, mm-hmm. George Washington Bridge is like. All right, so yeah, I'm south. So you're going towards South. You're not South Jersey, but you're going towards right. South Jersey. Right. Absolutely. Okay. And I loved growing up there because it was next to the big city. And honestly, I feel like a city girl too. Like I'm a Jersey, I'm a very much, I love Jersey. I'm a Jersey girl heart, but I feel like a city girl too, like a Manhattan kind of girl. You know what I'm saying? Because I always <laughs> used to sneak and I used to tell my mom, mom, I'm going to be right back. Take the little dollar van into the city and like explore. And yes. I knew that I was going to be working in the city and be involved with so many people from the city and i love it no that's know? that's what's up that's that's definitely what's up all right now i'm a father's pride oh okay so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go through some things so a father's pride is another it's it's a small role um but i enjoyed it because i love the production i love um the the director he was amazing um i i played the girlfriend of a man who is a reformed street, you know, street guy. Okay. He's now into church heavily. And like, basically I helped him get there. So, you know, in every, in life, you know, every man behind every man, there's a good woman. There's a strong woman. That's me in that movie. Um, so, you know, there's going to be a part two to that. So okay. I, because I have such a small role in part one, the part two, I think they're going to expand on it. Yeah, they're going to expand. But I liked that aspect of my character where she's like this strong woman who supports her man through thick and thin, through the ups and downs. He's he was down, she was there. He was up, she's there. I mean, he's he wasn't even all the way up, but she's like I know that God is going to take you there, you know. So that was beautiful. So she was, you know, we had the locks versus uh Dipset battle. She was what you would call a ride or die chick. Right, a ride or die like, chick. Did it? Did it? I love. Who were you going for? Just off topic, real quick, because I was going for the locks. All right, let me let me first say this. I I rock with the locks, and I rock with Dipset. Right, right? me too. Because I've worked with both. I love both. I film for Freaky Zeke. Mm. So I went into this thing. I was. I'm already. I'm already. Loyal. I'm already. Yeah. I'm biased. I'm loyal to to the guys. You know what I'm saying. So I was going for Dipset. Um, and I I was going back and forth with people just because when I the I think the way they broke down the tracks, like if you just take the song that they were playing versus each other and remove the performance from it, I think that Dipset wins. If you go if you go by the performance, then the locks just blow them out. Well, I can't even say the locks, but Jada Kiss blows them out the water because it was kind of seemed top like, five dead or alive. He is. That's why. I, and Jada's one of my favorite rappers. That's Mine why I said, too. It was kind of like for me, it felt like Jada Kiss versus Dipset because I, you know, I mean, they got no. But shout out to Styles P and Ajwa. Those are my people. Those are my friends. I love them. I, I mean, Styles got some hits too. And I mean, I wanted to hear more of them though. I like, I like, I've so. And this is like you know, people don't realize like how close these guys actually are. Uh, the locks and Dipset. So we actually up not too far from here is Evo Lounge. Um, and I sh- and whenever Zeke is in New York, I usually do a lot of his parties and stuff like that. So his birthday party two years ago, two or three years ago, Jada came to his birthday party and performed at his birthday party. So these guys, are, friends, yeah. So they're actually this really is like, cool. Yeah, this is like you know for this is for fun and it's it's that's beautiful. I think you know shout out to them because doing that really showed hip hop that you can battle and still be cool, still be friends, still yes. chill and kick it. And it's not a problem. It's no beef and it's all love. It's like, it is no, what it is. It's, it's definitely a family affair. And I thought that, I, you know, the culture still won. We all won. New right. York won. The this culture. Was, this was big for New York um, because this was literally New York versus New York. Um, the only, like, I guess the versus battle that I probably, you know, Relate this one too closest would probably be Jeezy and Gucci, even though I know they're two individual artists. But as far as what that versus meant for Atlanta, and you know, in the South, 
this battle meant for for New York, the East Coast, because these are two of the top groups of all time and this individuals. Was big. This was big because it's like. For, uh, at least for me right now, like, I mean, hip hop is just, it's always evolving, yes. but, but I'm from that era. So to me, it was like that era still rocks till this day. Like it still rocks all that yes. music, all those songs, all those hits, you can still play them and people are still going to be like raising their hands, singing every single lyric. Yes. And that's beautiful. And that's unity. And I love to see that in New York. Like literally I'm sure Bronx, Harlem, Brooklyn and Manhattan were all there. Yes, like and Queens. Let me not forget Queens. Get the money. Yeah, all the boroughs was definitely in the building because I know I've seen borough. I can't really say I saw people just because was maybe was Staten Island, but I know I know the Bronx was there. I'm sorry, Staten Island. Listen, I used to live there. It's an extended Jersey. (laughs) It is, but and and no, listen, no, no shade to Staten Island. No shade. I love Staten Island. I lived there. I loved it. My girl Mary's from there. I just you know just sometimes you know they're not always in in the building. Like it's it's like like. When you're from like when you like from Brooklyn, the, the Bronx, or Manhattan, and you, we look at people across the bridge as it's just like yo, y'all just mad for y'all. Well, y'all even necessarily it might not be a part of us. Y'all might not even make it because yeah. the drive's too far, and y'all and, might drink, drink and drive. And <laughs> yeah, and then the vice versa. Listen, people that li- like I'm from Brooklyn, and 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 I lived in the Bronx like between so half my life. So they don't like going over bridges. People don't like to travel over bridges. So if you're not like already here in the mix, it's, it's kind of tough. But I know, you know, I know I saw Seas was there. So Brooklyn was represented. The Bronx was there because uh, French and uh, Fat Joe was there. Uh, Manhattan, uh, uh, 40 Cal was there. I saw him there. I saw Ferg was there. Okay. So just, you know, so it was, we, it was definitely a nice little mix. And I mean, yeah, man, like when you hear. As soon as you hear, I get high, I get high, I, get high. Oh, when I, I was c- pregnant when that song came out, and I was so devastated because I couldn't get high. <laughs> 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 oh my god, I was so. I remember my girls were like playing it at the baby shop. I'm like, why would y'all do this? But what's up? I get high. Listen, well, listen, you can still do the head nod. You know, you know what I'm that's what I was doing. I was doing the head nod and the hand. Like, yep, my bitches is getting high. That's I'm a, sorry for cursing. It's, it's all good, and it's and you know, it was a different time, but it's legal now, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have that comment, and, and it's always been legal to me. <laughs> it's, it's all right, yeah, I guess right because you know people say whatever you identify. So if you identify le- weed as being legal, it's always been legal. It's then. always been legal to me for health yeah. reasons. I have anxiety, like I. And that's why I don't do it for any other reason. <laughs> Listen, I I understand. We we've had uh, Al Harrington on the show before. Uh, former New York Nick, former Indiana Pacer, okay, Golden State Warrior, and yeah. he actually has Viola. Um, so he kind of, which is which is uh, his 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 company. So he's heavy into the marijuana industry. He actually just bought uh, Allen Iverson and uh, to Viola with him as well. Um, so you know he spoke to one of the things he spoke about on the show was he told us a story about his grandmother who she couldn't see very well, and there was one day you know she he wound up giving her some stuff so she want she used it and, and she started seeing. It. And she started crying. She and she was saying like this was she. This was the first time she was able to see her Bible. Weed is the yeah. is Jesus. Weed is Jesus. So, if you think about it, it is. It is from the earth. It's it's from the earth. It's natural. Well, you know, some people it might gave put some her stuff in it. Sight. But yeah, but it yeah. So you know, and just you know, just you know, when you when you look at the the the, the medical usage of of marijuana and and how helpful it is for so many different things. Um, you know, we, I think we've just put, not we, because not me, because I haven't put a negative connotation on it at all, but just for so many years, so society many have, yeah. has put a, such a negative connotation on marijuana that it's like, even though, you know, if you actually do your homework, it does have those medical purposes. A lot of people can't look past it. So even when you see like a situation like Shakari Richardson, right? who, you know, and granted she did break the rules, you know, however, she was in a in a in an area where marijuana is legal, and she was dealing with a a very deep situation, the situa- loss of a, yeah. of, a, of a mom. You know? I would have def. I mean, it it would have. I mean, listen, I love her. She's amazing, and she was honest, and she lives her truth, and that, that I will always respect her for that. You know, it just sucks that like. You know, like when you when you know you got to take it when you know you have like for me, right? If I know I have an audition, right? Mm-hmm. I have an audition for this big movie, and like 
if I don't like memorize my lines, I'm not gonna get this part. Like, if yeah. not only memorize my lines, but I have to really get into this character. If I don't do that, I'm not gonna get the part. I'm not gonna get the role. So it's like discipline is is very important in sports, in acting, in anything that you do in life. Discipline is so important. And even though, like, yeah, anybody, we we've all been there. I just wish. Because we were all rooting for her. I feel like Tyra, we were rooting for you. Yeah. But I love her. Like, you know, it is what it is. And I hope that next year she gets that, you know, I want her I wanna see her run next year. Like yeah, she she's the good thing is she's young enough to compete in the next Olympics. Um, yes. and Actually, you know, because it's not of, next. Oh, it's not next year. It's in 10 well, it'll be technically because usually it's four years, but because of COVID, it was remember the, the Olympics was pushed back, so it's actually only going to be a three year wait. Yeah. Uh, this time, so she she'll be able to get back, but she'll be able to get back to competition because she's it's only a suspension that she's dealing with, so it's just that she won't make the Olympics. That's all because it's, the suspension. That's would such a big deal, through. but like, yeah, I want to see her in three years. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, and we we definitely riding with her. She uh, listen, it, it's actually still working out. She's definitely getting the bag. She got to deal with uh with beats with uh Dr. Dre. Right, she's Dre. getting her bag. She's getting to the money. Listen, we'll smoke a blunt after you win the Olympics, though. Exactly, <laughs> us and uh, Michael Phelps. And, uh, yeah, who, we'll all be there Hussein together. Both, we'll I'm not an there. athlete, but I used to run track when I was a kid. No, but there's so listen, and here's the thing, right? You know, as far as marijuana goes in, in pro sports. I wrote an article for uh, for uh, for Marijuana Magazine a couple of years ago, and I was just talking about all of the, there's so many athletes that use marijuana for, you know, for well, I'm, whatever purposes they use it for. Muscle relaxing. But must, yeah, but, but as far as the, the medical side goes, right? So you have a, a guy like Ricky Williams who gave up his NFL career to smoke to, marijuana. Well, yeah, to, but he's... To, call, to basically have to a To be lifestyle. a part of the, 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 yeah, the, the lifestyle of, of marijuana. I'm going to fuck off. This is your African king of comedy, Michael Blackson. You watching real friends do a talk. Get real with it, my son. We, you know, we, we give 50 his, his props all the time because... He's, he's amazing. He's a genius. He's on... He's got about five shows on television right now. Yeah. He's on ABC, which is probably the biggest network that you can get on. But then he has the shows on Stars. He just dropped Power Book 2. Power Book 3, Raising Canaan. I was on Power right Book now. 3. Power Book 3. Okay. Canaan, Raising... I'm in, I'm in that. has an extra, but I'm in that. And I hope they feature me because I'm going to be looking. I'm going to be watching directors. <laughs> now, now, now we're going to be we, now we're going to be looking because now I got to see. I, did I some, rock with Raising Canaan. Yeah, I did some. I did some background work <laughs> on a few shows. Um, I don't really promote it because they don't let you take pictures and stuff like that. But yeah. it's out now. It came out on my birthday actually, July 18th. I was like, oh, thank you, God. You hey, happy belated little birthday. Gift. Thank you. Um, but yeah, so I I love just working. In all different areas, like I don't, I don't want to be in a box. Like, don't just put me as the pretty girl. I don't want, like, yes, everybody wants to be the lead. We all want to be the lead, but yeah. it's not always gonna happen, you know. And I'm okay with that. Sometimes you, you, you know, you gotta put your work in, build that resume up, and then that'll come. And then sometimes you can go in on an audition and wow them, and you go from what was the kid from uh, from Finding Forest to the Black Kid. And who he was just going in, he, he he said he had was just trying to make some money because his phone was about to be shut off. And he was like, if I could just get a little extra part, I could I could pay my phone bill off and wow. I'll be good. And winds up being a lead alongside of uh, of Sean Connery. Wow! Like it doesn't it, it does not get any better than that. It doesn't. And then you know he's had he's had a pretty solid career since then. He's been he's been the lead in, in a couple of other movies uh, since then. So, you know, it's just, but it's, it's really, it's just the grind, man. You, you gotta it's be on It's a grind, yeah. I mean, I've been in the game for, for a while, but I know that, like, there there's so much to be done. And I know that, like, my purpose is so much bigger than just acting, too. Like, you know, I want to help people, too. I want to help with single moms and children, and I want to help. I don't know how I'm going to do it, y'all, but I'm going to figure it out, and I'm going to get back to y'all. But. Well, <laughs> listen, again, you know, we started off the program talking about, you know, your philanthropy work, and, um, you know, you helping out in different various charity events. Now, I will say this, because when I came and I seen you was on the NYPD side on the softball team, 
I was trying to infiltrate them. And <laughs> then they started flirting with me. And they were all cute. And I just couldn't help myself. And I was like, all right, I'll help you guys win. I'll ca- I'll do the home run. And I was the one who actually helped them win. They, The reason why NYPD won was because of me. I was distracting the other team. And I... Did the home run, right? Well, that was a home yeah, run. It was, yeah, it was a home run. And I, I slid and everything, y'all. I'm and I can, yeah, I can understand where you come from when you're saying you did the distraction for the other team because, you know. I was looking good. Yeah. I, you know, <laughs> okay, let me not toot my own horn. No, hold on. She did have the socks on. And I was I, what I, I had the thighs. Yeah, and I, called, I just, I liked them. They were, they were nice. They were, you know, they Are those baseball or soccer socks? Because my friends were making fun of me at home. They were like, the, you know, you were wearing soccer socks. And I was like, what? They were like, yeah. It's I'm not, not going to complain because it looked good on you. I don't care if it was soccer, baseball, or tabletop Football. tennis. Whatever it was, you can wear those anytime you want to. See, guys, you know, as long as you look cute while you're doing it, it's all good. Yeah, you definitely you definitely stopped the show a few times. Uh, <laughs> but, hey, what are you going to do? what I do. It's, it's all for a good cause. Um, it was just, for a good cause. Yes. I love helping the children. I mean... First of all, softball was one of my favorite sports growing up. You know, what do you just hit the ball and run? Great, thank you. <laughs> and I used to make and growing up, I used to be like, all right, I'm gonna make believe it's someone I hate. And like, I, did, <laughs> did your coach ever tell you that? Growing no, up, my coach no. used to tell me, oh make goodness. believe it's someone you hate and hit that ball, Addie. And I used to literally envision like the face of like anyone that I just had an argument I was a little kid so just like if I had an argument over bubble gum like that the, person was going to get it your milk on the school lunch line to so, get chocolate yeah, milk it like, was on it was over <laughs> boom you're getting hit with this bat on the field and I used to run I wasn't and actually I was a good runner cuz I ran track she's a runner she's a track star <laughs> she going to run away when it gets hard that's me y'all I run away when it gets hard <laughs> But, yeah, I, no, I had a lot of fun growing up. As a kid, my mom put me in all sorts of sports, and I think it's important for kids to play sports. My kids don't like playing sports, and I f- tried to force them until the coach was like, listen, ma'am, they don't want to play. We're not going to keep them here. Yeah. <laughs> now, let me ask you this. But they like music, so. Okay, oh, they like music. But do do they watch YouTube videos of people playing video games? <sighs> I yes. noticed that's a trend with a lot of kids. Yes, they do. I am guilty of raising a child <laughs> who watches other people <laughs> play video games. Why, I will never understand it, but I guess it's a thing. And then sometimes he plays video games, and then he'll record himself, and I guess he uploads that, and other yeah. people watch him, and I guess it's like a thing. But um, I just enrolled my son in college like i had to force him because he wasn't with it and i was like no you're going to college like this is over i gave you a year to figure it out i think kids nowadays are really lazy and like parents please force your kid to play like i regret not forcing my older son to play sports because i was like oh let him do what he wants you know you don't want to force them into something that they don't want to do yeah like you teach them and you put them in everything you see what they like and then if it doesn't work it doesn't work if it does it does you know but he was very like, I don't want to play sports, period. It wasn't a sport in the world that he wanted to play, but like the computer, technology, anything with like gadgets, he loves. He and he loves making music and that's what he does. Well, I mean, that's good because as long you know, as long as they're into something, um, you know, it's not when when we were growing up, outside was the thing to, to do. Like you wanted to go outside and just do something. We was outside. Yeah. Now these the kids they want to say is I mean, listen, I play two K, so I'm not mad at the kids want to stay inside and play play video games. Um, but yeah, we it was just a different time, and now that's one thing I noticed. My nephews and I like it, it blows my mind whenever I see them watch somebody play a video game. I'm just like, don't you want to play it yourself at least? I mean, I guess they don't know how, and they're learning how to play through someone else. It doesn't make sense to me. Like just. Do it yourself, please. Yeah, like, I, just go out, just try it, and then if you lose, it don't matter. Just reset it and start over. Yeah, I don't know. These kids, I mean, if I have a kid again, I don't think that's ever going to happen. I'm just saying if. <laughs> I am, not, girl or boy, she is going to be in every sport or he, whatever. Like, ballet, from ballet to, like, flag football. Like, we're doing it all, sis. Like not, you don't you don't have an option at this and point. And I'm saying sis, like it's gonna be a girl. It's, it might be a boy. I don't know. I don't even want kids, but like I'm just saying, <laughs> if I did, <laughs> like just or I'm telling you, future parents out there, please force your kids. 
sports are so important. Yeah, no, it, de- it definitely is, man. It and teaches, like, it teaches you how to be organized. It teaches you how to work in with your community, with your peers, and, and how to, like, work as a team. Yes. And just how to not be a sore loser, even though, like, don't lose. <laughs> and that's, and I, I, and I gotta say, because we talk about this a lot on the show, like, we're not with this, the whole participation trophy era. Like, we're so against that. Yeah. Like, I want to, there's this one winner, or there's one team that wins, and there's a loser. There's not everybody, yay, everybody came, great job. Like, I'm so not for that participation trophy stuff. Okay, so you like, like, we were the winners, and y'all the losers. Yeah. We get trophies. Now, don't, don't, you don't got to go crazy bullying people when you win and all that. I mean, you know, I kind of kind of mess with my nephews. Like, I don't, they, like my nephew, he came over here uh, two weeks ago. He about five right now. He was like, I'm going to beat you in 2K now. I'm going to beat you. I smoked him. Hurt his feelings. He ain't want to play no more. But that's the type of things I do because I got to build you up. You know, I got to show that competitive edge. I mean, yeah, I, re- I think that's important. Like, I think I think that's not, you know, that's there's nothing wrong with that. Being competitive and always wanting to win. Or, or like, it's okay to do your best. And, and, and then you'll know the type of kid you have, right? Like, some kids naturally are competitive. And then yeah. you've got to light a fire under their ass so they can be more competitive. Whereas other kids... They don't work so well under pressure, so you don't want to put the pressure on them. So it's kind of yeah. like knowing your knowing who you who you have, you know. Yeah. Now, and, and then see the thing about sports with with me is, and what which I love the most is that sports brings everybody together. Exactly, it doesn't matter what race, what nationality, what religion. If you were a fan of basketball and you like the Knicks, you like the Nets. Or if you're a baseball fan, you like the Mets, you like the Yankees, it doesn't matter what you look like, what you sound like, we gonna be together as soon as the as soon as the, 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 the game start, we gonna be rooting for the same team. I done been in, in, in at Yankee Stadium with the people that you be like, what, what are we doing here? And we just, everybody just start going in. Everybody you want there your team together. To win. You want your team to win. Exactly. I yeah, I go to games and you you just start talking to people that you don't, you wouldn't even probably not normally talk to. But guess what? That's a good thing because you yeah. never know. You need every, you need to come together. And that's like you said, sports brings everybody together. It's like there might be like a heated argument. It's like, what's your, who's your team? Oh, we're the same team. All right, forget it. We're not going to fight yeah. no more. But I bet you if, it's a, <laughs> if you go to the Yankee game, and that person over there got a Red Sox hat or a Tampa Bay hat on, and they so the first time they say something, and we all got Yankee fitteds on. Or we going in on you? Listen, it's always a problem at my house because you know I'm Dominican. Baseball is like our thing, and um, my mom is like big on the Yankees, and my aunt is like a, a Boston Red Sox fan because my aunt lives in Boston. I'm sorry to hear that. And and sh- and it's always like, oh, it's so annoying. I don't watch baseball because of it because they around that time they're like always like, you know, they're going at it on the phone. She can't come over for Thanksgiving. She's talking my about aunt, stuff. not my, my aunt. mom. My no, mom your mom is good. Yeah. Your mom is good. I'm going to have to work on her with the Brooklyn thing. <laughs> but as far as she can come over for Thanksgiving she's dinner. Good. She loves Brooklyn she's now. A she fan. Okay, all right. That was back in the day in the 80s. Oh, she's good. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. That all was right. back then when I was a kid and she was like, you're not going to Brooklyn. All right. All right. <laughs> Question. Is there an ideal role that you have? Um... I'm going to be honest. Like, I, a lot of people ask me this question, and I never really honestly know what to say because I don't ever want to put myself in a box. I want to play, I want to just play all roles, but I definitely want to play a role that people are like, wow, I felt her. I, I, I really, that shit made me cry, cat. Like, that shit really made me feel some, some way. And, and this story, like, needs to be told because. There's other people that are experiencing the same thing, and, and and you're gonna inspire them, and you're gonna motivate them to like get out of that, whatever it is. I don't know what role that is. Somebody write me a, a, a script that's gonna make people cry because I'm ready. I am such a drama queen, and that's easy for me to tap into. Drama is so easy for are, me to are tap you spoiled? into. Am I spoiled? Yes. Like in what way? In my house with my mom. Well, I, I mean, was not well, anymore. Well, growing up, you were spoiled. Now you're not spoiled anymore. As an adult, you're not spoiled. I'm I'm spoiled. 
<laughs> okay, yeah. I'll, I'll, okay, so this is the thing. I'm spoiled, but I'm humble. I'm spoiled because I'm, I spoil myself. I like nice things. I like to work hard for things that I have. And my mom, like, growing up, yeah, she always, like, spoiled me. But didn't... We Okay, so this is the thing. We were poor, but I thought we were rich. Does mm. that make sense? No, it makes perfect sense. Like, we were poor. We didn't have much. But I always felt rich. I always felt like... Bitch, I went shopping. Like, yeah. we always went shopping. My mom always made it work, but it was like we weren't buying Gucci, Fendi, or shit like that. We were shopping, but I was happy. My mom didn't really cook much because she was working all the time, but my grandmother always cooked, and we all ate at grandma's house, and it was like no matter what, we were all eating at grandma's house, and she was going to make some work out of the $50, $60 that yeah. all my uncles and aunts gave my my grandma to and we're going to feast. Cook, yeah, and we're going to feast. Yeah, I, And I never felt poor. Like, we were, f but don't get it twisted. We were not rich. We did not drive Benzes. We, I did not grow up in a mansion. I grew up in an apartment building in Weehawken, New Jersey. But it was the nice area of yeah. Jersey. At the time, growing up, it wasn't the nicest because they were, like, cleaning it up. But by the time I was a teenager, it was like Weehawken was, like, prime realty. Yeah. Because it was right next to New York. Did you, uh, did you, did you grow up watching uh, WWF? I didn't, but my cousins did, and they annoyed the crap out of me because that's all they wanted to watch, and they never let me watch TV because they were always watching the WWF, and they had the little things. And on Saturdays, um, we would go to my madrina's house. My madrina's my godmother. Mm -hmm. And my two older cousins, like, they were big on WWF. And, like, that's what we were doing. Like, we, I was watching it, but not really watching it because they were watching it, so I was there, and I was just like... I'll watch it. But, yeah, I liked um, the 316 Austin. Austin, Stone Cold. Stone Cold, Steve Austin. I thought he was handsome. <laughs> you know I got to throw you, in a little you, flirt you, in you, there. Because this you, live you like television. You like a guy that could chug a beer, huh? Huh? You like a guy that could chug a beer, two beers at once? Two beers at once <laughs> and can just, you know what you I'm could, saying? If you, if you chug two beers at once, you might have a chance. I might have a chance. <laughs> He was fine. No, Stone Cold, Stone Cold was definitely the man. Um, I was a huge WWF fan growing up, now WWE. But, I mean, I went to WrestleMania as an adult. Like, that's how big of a wrestling fan Aww. I was. But it was it was It's wrestling. acting, right? Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's whoa. acting. We, whoa, we not about to... Nah, we don't do that here. <laughs> don't start, don't you start. An actor knows. Don't, don't start, don't start, don't start, okay? <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> They know what they're doing. Obviously, they do. they're really they're fighting. Professionals. First of all, okay, you can't do a hurricane run off the top rope. That's not acting. You actually got to know how to do that. Okay, some of the things like yeah, this, this, some things. This, this, this is a script. But they're actually they're, they're athletes, though. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, no, that I know. I know that they're athletes and they really train and they have to. It's Vince like, has good writers, though. Vince does have good writers. So this is the thing in films, like you know those action films, like they train. They have yeah. to know how to fight. A lot of those. The Rock is like one of my favorite yes. WWF or E whatever. WWE now, yeah, superstars. He is my fave. Why? Because he transitioned into acting. He did it so effortlessly. We yeah. all knew he was a star, but we didn't know how big of a star he was gonna be. Like until he, you know, just there was a couple. There was a couple. There's been a couple of wrestlers that have made that transition over. Uh, Hulk Hogan, you know, he he probably set the tone first right, for wrestlers was... transitioning and doing big movies. And television shows because he had uh, okay. was Thunder in Paradise he had for a couple of years on TNT, um, and then he just you know he was on the movies. But John Cena, as oh, a matter I, fact, John Cena is actually in a movie. He's Let in a new stop movie. Stop being right a now. groupie for all these WWE. Oh, cursing! I'm sorry. Oh my it's God, right. John go, Cena! We... Did you just mention him? All right, that's, uh, my, guy. that's my guy. But I, I love him. Do you yeah. know him? No, I don't know him personally. Oh God, like that. But if I if I meet him, I let him know how you feel about John him. John Cena. I'm sorry, I don't look look. I look better than this. All right, you're hot. <laughs> <laughs> yo, 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 Cena. She 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 looks she looks good, John. Just I love case. John Cena. No, I really do love it because he's one of my. Okay, all jokes aside, he's my son's favorite, my little one. He my my little one loves him. And then I look, I I didn't know who John Cena was. I really did it. And then I looked, and I was like. My son likes. He's hot. Oh my god! Maybe I should figure out a way to bring him to the to the. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that your son is not gonna, gonna gonna want you hooking up with John Cena. He wouldn't even know. Oh no, I'm just kidding. At, at, at some point, <laughs> well, he might. now he does. Great. Well, oh yeah, my yeah, spot now, is blown. Yeah, because I'm definitely now. I gotta put this clip out there. <laughs> Wait, so.
<laughs> He's gonna be like, Mom, no. It's all jokes. I just be joking. I'm a huge flirt. I like to flirt. I think it's it's fun to flirt sometimes. Like it's just fun. <laughs> See, you know what? I'm not even going. No, nope, <laughs> it's just fun. <laughs> Listen. But all jokes aside, John Cena, you're a great actor. <laughs> Yes, yes, John Cena, you are a great actor. I I, I like a lot of your movies. Um, oh, but I was so I was gonna say so. Actually, it was wrestling that which is 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 what let me know that we were growing up poor. Oh, that's where right. So I had it was a, a situation where the first King of the Ring came on, and I'm like probably the biggest Bret Hart fan. So I wanted to watch pay per view. Me and my brother we wanted to watch the pay per view, and my mom is like, "All right." I order this pay per view, but we ain't gonna have cable next month if we order this pay per view. So you know, me and my brother, we like, man, whatever. She, she playing games. She just trying to say, right, right, so right. We, don't, we don't watch the pay per view. We watch that pay per view, and sure enough, next month the cable was off, and it was like, well, man, I, I will that say cable. this: your mom. Well, the thing is, she probably was able to do it and was budgeting and was like, no, like, all right, like budgeting, because I do that too. I'd be like, you know what, like. And then there's other times where I'll say that, but I'll still figure out to have, like, I know that feeling. Because like, the pay-per-view is, is, is pretty close to the monthly bill. So she probably was on some, I right, that's going to be the bill for next month for that. Right. When I pay for this, what's going to be? That's the bu- it's a budget. Yeah. Every parent has a budget. Bret, Bret Hart did win that first King of the Ring, so I was, I was, it was worth it. It was, yeah, it was worth it for me until the next month when we wanted to watch TV. And then it was just like... Well, this, Channel this 13 always worked on 11. <laughs> no, it does not work. PBS doesn't work. First of all... PBS. It, did, it didn't work. Like, I, first of all, I got tired of watching MASH after after a while. That was the only thing that would come on TV at, at, at night was MASH, so... Lucky but, for me, I was always outside. I didn't watch much TV growing up, surprisingly, right? Be, like, there was shows that I would watch that I wouldn't miss, like Family Matters and Full House and... Um, there was another one I keep uh, growing pains like okay. those three shows I always wanted to watch, but I didn't really stay home watching TV. I mean, there was like the little cartoons after school, but that's when I was young. So would you be? Would you? You could. You could be a good sitcom mom. I would love to be a sitcom mom. I could. I could definitely. I would it. love to be the next Sofia Vergara. Sofia, can you retire, please? Sorry, I love you. All that, all that fondness cannot retire just yet. Uh, just go. <laughs> Come on. No, I'm kidding. I love Sofia Vergara. I actually want to work on a project with her because people say we're very similar. We're very spicy in that way. Like the the character she plays in um, Modern. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can what? see that. It's, it's, she's, she, me and her are the same. Like, she started off as a model, very sexy, promis- like thong, bikinis, all that. And I did the same thing. And then now she turns into acting. I don't know if her mom was, like, yelling at her for the same. My mom used to yell at me for wearing the bikinis. So, like, I think we lived a lot of the same life. Like, she she must have. Because my mom, till this day, I have to, like, send her pictures of J-Lo and Sophia, like, half naked. And show her, like, mom, like, this is how everyone starts. <laughs> <laughs> because oh she's my like, goodness. yeah, because she doesn't, she hates when I throw a bikini pick up. She's like, oh, you're just showing everyone your goods. And I'm like, mom, that's what we're supposed to. I don't know. It's like, we're supposed to do that, apparently. <laughs> wow. Well, <laughs> that's crazy. All right. Well, listen, give me, because we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna wrap things up soon. Give me the number one director and the number one actor that you want to work with. Oh, my God. So I definitely want to work with Sama Hayek. And um, that she's just someone I want to she's a director, producer and actress. So I want to work with her all around. And um, I want to work with Tyler Perry Mm. for sure. Like I I just even though you got to get down to Atlanta, you want to work with Tyler. I know. I know. Everyone tells me go to Atlanta, go to Atlanta. But um, I definitely want to work with him. There's a bunch of directors that I want to work with, and and I don't want to put myself in a box. I want to work with all of you guys, like, um, but that's that's like top right there. I want to definitely work with Tyler Perry. Well, Tyler Perry and and the guy is who amazing. made yeah, and I, oh wait, let me not forget Issa Rae. I love her. She yes. is a, like a genius. The way she like secretly had that wedding. Come on, mm-hmm. she's. Genius. Shout out to Issa Rae. I, I, oh man, I, I love everything that, that she does. She's she's so dope. I mean, we got a lot of you know a lot of strong you know talented people out here right now. And and the thing I love the most, especially with Tyler Perry, is Tyler Perry keeps us working. Right. 
Like he he continue and he has so many projects between movies. He's got a couple different shows on BT between BT and BT Plus right now. So he is keeping uh, our people working. And that's one thing I really love. I love that. And that's something that I ins- that I admire about him because that's what I want to do. I want to keep people working. I aspire to be my own, like a director yes. and a writer. It's just, you know, I'm I'm just in the beginning stages of my acting career. I don't want to like jump the gun and I'm still learning. But I write all the time, you know, and I have an amazing story that I want to you know, tell the world and I want to like you know, put it out there and create jobs for people, for all my Latinos, all my African Americans. Like I, I want to do that and and just inspire all the young little girls out there that that want to be in this business. It's not easy. Um, it's it's definitely challenging, but you know, just stick to your morals. Like if you want to have fun, have fun, but always have your morals intact in this business, no matter what. Like it's hard, but Trust me, it pays off in the end. So that's all I got. No, that's good. That's good. Let me really quick before we get out of here. Let me shout out the sponsors. Uh, shout out to Kmart. Shout out to Petro Home Services. Shout out to my guys over at the Rosado Firm, and of course, shout out to Soundview Liquors. They keep the bar stocked for mm-hmm. us. But we we in the TV station, you know. We had, we in the home studio right now, so we don't got the bar. Well, we still got the bar stocked, but it's not like when we at the station station. Um, but uh, yeah, shout out to Soundview Liquors, and um, also. Make sure you guys are following us on all our social media, facebook.com forward slash Real Fans Real Talk, Twitter, Instagram, at Real Fan Talk, uh, youtube.com forward slash For The Fans Productions. And do not worry if you are not in New York City Thursday nights at 8 p.m. and you can't watch us on television, you can watch us from anywhere in the world. All you have to do is go to the website, realfansrealtalk.com. Click on that red button right there on the home page. Uh, really quick before we get up out of here, please tell these people where they can get you at. You guys can find me literally on everything. Twitter's, uh, so on Instagram, that's the mm-hmm. <laughs> Instagram, TikTok, everything. Catherine K Nunez. And that's Catherine with a K. And my, my website is Catherine K Nunez.com. Stay tuned. I'm going to be hosting parties and stuff like that coming up. Cause my manager is like, you need to be out there more and I need to be in the mix. So. Stay tuned because I'm gonna be out in these streets. I'm gonna be outside. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna have to pull up to one. And you gonna pull up to my party? Oh, we're definitely, definitely pulling up to the to the party. Which, yes. which one are we doing first? I think this Thursday I, I'm hosting um, a party with uh, I forgot his name. I'm so bad at this. I'm sorry, guys. I love you, but <laughs> I, I I'm like this is why I need to be in the mix. This is why my manager <laughs> said I need to be in the mix. It's it's okay. It's all good because you about to be out there now. I've been so focused go. on my acting. I didn't. I forgot about the. There's other artists out there. Where's the, where's the party at on Thursday? I think it's going to be in the city or in the Bronx. I'm not sure. If it's going to be in the Bronx, we're going to pull up. My birthday so... is, on, is on Monday, so we're going to pull up. Oh, you're definitely c- pulling up. We're partying. But I'm so <laughs> bad at this. I'm sorry. Please bear with me. I'm going to be get better at this. But I'm hosting a party on Thursday. So follow me on Instagram, and y'all will find out where it's at. <laughs> I'll tell you what. This is what we're going to do. Once we get all the details in... <laughs> Okay, I'm going to post it up on, on our uh, on on the Real Fans Real Talk Instagram. I'll make sure I share it so y'all can pull up, y'all can rock out. I'm gonna go out. Thank it's you. my birthday. We're gonna celebrate, and uh, we, we'll we'll make sure you guys got all the details, and we'll put all the information up. Well, the, by the time this is by the time this airs, the party will have been had already. Right, but, but yeah, it's, it's all good. We'll do a recap. But I, what I what I will do though is once uh, Pocket Full of Game Two drops. And uh, the, the the movie that you're gonna be shooting out in Indianapolis. Yes, we will make sure that we we promo uh, both projects. Thank you so much. I appreciate you for having me on your show. This is amazing, and I'm just excited for this this new journey. Uh, listen, I appreciate you coming coming up to the Bronx to the studio. BX baby, what? Um, is so. that what it is? That is, that's what it is. Yeah, I love her. I'm from Jersey. I don't know, but I'm. I love y'all. I love the Bronx. I've been working. Like I used to host another podcast. I used to do the Party and Bullshit show up here. Um, in the Bronx. Oh, with well. uh, with, with, with Jack, Jack Thriller. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I love Jack. He's he's freaking hilarious. I love him too. He's like he's like the little but older brother that I've never had. <laughs> you know what? That actually right? describes him perfectly. Because he's older than us, yes. but he acts like our little ki- our little brother. But yes. I love him. He, yo, he's freaking hilarious. I, I've been with him a couple different times because we have uh, mutual friends, but he's he's a good dude. 
and he's freaking hilarious. Yes. So that's that's big time. But listen, uh, we 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 are going to wrap things up. Um, I gotta get you out of here because I know you, you you booked and busy right now. So I don't want to keep you holding you hostage for too long. Thank you. Um, but we're gonna have to we're gonna get some shots in on uh, on Thursday. Yes. And it's, and it's going to be lit. I'm excited, yes. So for myself, Trip Young, and my guest, Kathy Nunez. Yes, Catherine Nunez in the building. Catherine, we up out of here. Peace. Bye. Uh-huh. This is Real Fans, Real Talk. talk. Real Fans, Real Talk. We as real as you thought. Real Fans, Real Talk. We the illest, of course. Real Fans. Real talk, we the illest on court. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, reporting live from the cam. High in demand, so please stand by if you can. What we got is worth a lot, so put a tie on your plans. On court, talk of sports through the eyes of the fans. With Trip Young, Emma Marie, Eric Sanchez. You heard what I said, we elite. Check the latest topics and stay ahead of the beat. Keep us in your topics and uh-huh. we ahead of the Yo. streets. It's Johnny Floss, bringing a different type of blend. Backing up Misfit to make sure y'all tuned in. You gotta watch, this show is one of a kind. Updates on your TV screen from 8 to 9. For the older folks, so even if you're younger, no matter what sport, this show, we got it covered. It's filmed live in the middle of BK, so ain't no better sports show to watch on Thursdays. What's up, guys? I'm Emerald Marie, and be sure to check us out on the web at realfansrealtalk.com.